You guys want to know what's in the case? Come inside. I'll tell you. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the best Easter eggs and references in the first half of this spooky Disney Plus series. Beware of spoilers ahead. The, the camera, the mask, Biddle is getting back at us. Number 10, a familiar fate for the first Say Cheese victim. <laughs> say Cheese! That is not funny! <laughs> the truth is in your face! After Isaiah finds a camera in a creepy place, he makes the ill-advised decision to snap pictures of his friends with it. Unfortunately for his classmates, the device predicts bad things will happen before they come true. I'm saying that this camera is haunted, okay? It's a haunted camera, James, and you gotta believe me. Isaiah's girlfriend learns this firsthand when she ends up falling in the woods after the camera predicted she would. This incident is identical to an occurrence in the 1990s adaptation of Say Cheese and Die. During that episode, the very first picture that a young Ryan Gosling takes causes his friend to fall off stairs. Ah! I think so. Despite being decades apart, both versions of the camera like to demonstrate their powers by making someone take a nasty tumble. Number 9. What's in a town name? Now, poor Lawrence High, I need y'all to know that I love this town. And poor Lawrence High, I love this game. The Disney Plus series is primarily set in the town of Port Lawrence. Behind the scenes, a lot of filming took place in Vancouver. The shooting location feels like a cheeky nod to the fact that the original 90s series mostly called Ontario home. I'm sorry, it, it was the light, it triggered the light. We also have a sneaking suspicion of where the creators got the idea for the town name. While most people know that R. L. Stein wrote the Goosebumps books, not everyone knows what those initials stand for. The famous author's full name is Robert Lawrence Stein. We're pretty positive that he got goosebumps after hearing that his adventures would come to life in a town that shared part of his name. Hello, I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. Number 8. The premiere mirrors the very first book. So, uh, you inherited the house? Yeah, yeah. Turns out I'm, I'm the closest living relative. I know, that's what I said. <laughs> Never thought I'd be a homeowner on my salary. If you're a newcomer to the Goosebumps franchise, you might have thought Nathan Bratt's move into a spooky house was just a horror story cliché. Longtime fans knew this scary trope was a deep-cut reference to the series. The Goosebumps franchise began with the book Welcome to Dead House. As you might suspect, the plot revolves around a family who discovers their new home is not the welcoming place they were expecting. Believe me, there is no one here but us. But I saw him. While the classic story focuses on villains that are essentially zombies, the show leans on a very malicious ghost. But the one shared element between the creepy house in the original narrative and the Disney Plus series is that these places do a great job bringing us into a world of scares. Boo. Oh, oh my god, I'm so oh, sorry. Crap. Sorry, that backfired. Number 7. Echoes of a Harry Potter Plot I was cleaning out my basement the other day and found the scrapbook, so… The fiddle basement? Yeah, so I thought maybe you could show it to your mom. While Nathan is possessed, he gives Margot Harold Biddle's former journal. This book allowed her to relive past events. Additionally, the tome gave Harold the ability to threaten the lives of Margot and others without going through a living person. The mechanics of the book and its purpose in the plot instantly reminded us of Tom Riddle's diary in the Chamber of Secrets. So I decided to leave behind a diary, preserving my 16-year-old self in its pages so that one day, I would be able to lead another to finish Salazar Slytherin's noble work. This journal is initially given away by the vicious Lucius Malfoy. And not only was Harry able to visit the young Voldemort's memories, but the villain's soul nearly got the hero killed. The moral of the story is this. If someone hands you a book that looks cursed, politely decline and run away. Funny, the damage a silly little book can do. Number 6. The Giant Worm Twist both the 1996 and 2023 Go Eat Worms episodes build up to a moment where a protagonist faces off against a giant invertebrate. However, these attacks happen for very different reasons between adaptations. In the 90s, Todd faces off against a slimy beast because he constantly mistreated worms. We're going to prove that worms can survive just about anything. Heat, cold, stretching, even cutting them in half. <laughs> Pretty harsh. 
We expected that 2023's Lucas would be attacked for the same reason. But in a twist, the worms wanted the modern character to eat them in this adaptation. You want to see me eat it? No, thank you. I, I appreciate the attempt to cheer me up, but that's not gonna... <laughs> Uh, oh my god! They even give him some pretty incredible powers. When Lucas rejects the invertebrates, a giant one tries to get the kid back. We think both worms would have had more success attacking a city than trying to take down one person that upset them. Number 5. An Evil James Makes a Halloween Homage Thanks to timey-wimey shenanigans, James ends up at the mercy of several copies of himself he left scattered around time. Every time you went through the time loop, you created a duplicate version of yourself. That's not how time travel works. It's not how a cuckoo clock works either. After they try to take over his life, his friend Isabella realizes that the town may be full of evil temporal clones. This plot is a two-for-one homage to the Goosebumps stories I Am Your Evil Twin and the Cuckoo Clock of Doom. We don't have a cuckoo clock. Uh, stupid! Don't call your father stupid. Not him, me! Dad's not gonna buy the clock for another six years. The new narrative also pays tribute to a horror classic. After Isabella starts catching on to the time clones, one of the villains menacingly hangs outside her window before disappearing. The same exact thing happened to Laurie Strode in Halloween. It's nice to see that the horror classic continues to influence modern stories. James! What's up, man? Actually, no, none of us are the real James. Number four, a subtle haunted mask callback. Desperate to be more noticed, Isabella puts a chilling costume item on her face. While the mask does draw some looks, it also makes her more evil and becomes hard to take off. Isabella's twisted tail is nearly a beat-for-beat -beat recreation of the first televised version of the haunted mask. However, the young girl in the older story is told that only a symbol of love can save her from possession. I cannot take it off. Only you can. the symbol of love. What does that mean? While Isabella is never explicitly given that advice, she's only able to take the mask off after she remembers how much she cares for her brother. This small detail allowed the love plot point to subtly sneak its way into a modern context without coming across as a deus ex machina. Should we say a prayer or something? Rotten hell? Rotten hell. Number three, Lucas likes his scary movies. It's him. It's a worm. I know, pretty cool, right? Port Lawrence's resident daredevil clearly likes to get his heart pumping. Within his room, he has a prominent poster for Night of the Living Dead. This movie graphic was a cheeky way to foreshadow the episode's plot. While Night of the Living Dead focuses on humans who transform into zombies after being munched on, Lucas transforms his body after eating worms. No, you don't understand. I don't feel anything. And speaking of, the scene where the first invertebrates get inside of his nose is a direct callback to a similar incident in Drag Me to Hell. Coincidentally, that horror film happens to star none other than Justin Long as a guy named Clay. Maybe that character changed his name and moved to Port Lawrence after seeing his girlfriend get dragged to hell. <laughs> Number 2. The Biddle House Hides Future Threats well, I at least want to see what's down there first. Come on, nine to five. Show At this point, we are fully convinced that Harold's basement is full of terrifying objects. Fortunately, the heroes haven't touched a small yet dangerous item. The first episode shows Harold near a container of glowing green goo. We have a haunting suspicion that the glass jar contains monster blood. What is this stuff? I don't know what that is. It's warm. It feels like rubber. Throughout the Goosebumps franchise, this dangerous liquid has made many appearances. While its effects may vary, monster blood most commonly makes unwitting living organisms grow to abnormally large sizes. It'd be fun to see a hero embiggen themselves to save the day. However, it's probably for the best they keep the lid on monster blood. What happened to the monster blood? Once we got it back into the jar, we buried it where no one would ever find it. I hope you got it all. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Goosebumps Meets Elm Street 
It's time for them to learn the truth. A show full of horror homages would not be complete without paying its respects to Freddy Krueger. But the show goes above and beyond by filling its overall plot with a Nightmare on Elm Street parallels. In both the Disney series and the film franchise, the main villain originally perished in a fire set by locals that disliked him. Freddy and Harold eventually return as malevolent spirits. Both antagonists just so happen to target the kids of the people who originally burned them. You guys, did we just find out our parents are murderers? Honestly, if Harold threw on a sharp glove, striped sweater, and a fedora, Freddy Krueger might accept the evil kid as his new apprentice. I'm not gonna let you leave me. Come with me. What classic Goosebumps story deserves a shout out in the 2023 series? Oh my god, we're murder Nepo babies. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.